We've already looked at tangent lines and secant lines of functions. So for instance, if we have some function y equals f of x, and we pick two points, say a point A and a point B, and I label the coordinates of point A to be A and f of A, and then the coordinates of B to be A plus H and f of A plus H, then this distance right here would be a distance of H. And I can look at something called the absolute change. That's the change between f of a plus h and f of a. I'm just taking f of a plus h and subtracting out f of a. So that's equivalent to this distance right here, this vertical distance right here. And oftentimes it's not the absolute change that we're interested in, but the average rate of change. And that looks like f of a plus h minus f of a, that's the absolute change, divided by the interval h. And the blue line here represents a secant line between points a and b, and the average rate of change we saw was equivalent to the slope of this secant line. We can also look at the instantaneous rate of change, and we take the limit as h goes to zero of the average rate of change. So what we're doing is we're shrinking the interval uh, between A and B and allowing B to get closer and closer to A. And we saw that this was equivalent to the slope of the tangent line. So this green line right here would represent a tangent line. So now I want to look at something called a derivative. So this notion that we've had of the slope of a tangent line comes up so often in calculus that we actually give it a special name, a derivative. So the derivative of a function at a point a, which we write as f prime of a, that's how you would read that, that f with the little dash of a, we would say is f prime of a. And that's given by what you've seen before as the slope of the tangent line, the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, provided this limit exists. And so we can also get the alternate definition. Remember we had another way of defining the slope of the secant line by letting h equal x minus a. Then as h goes to zero, that would become x minus a goes to zero, or another way of saying that x minus a goes to zero is saying that x approaches a. So if you plug all that in, you get the alternate expression, which says that f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. So let's find the derivative of f of x equaling x cubed plus 2 at a. So we're looking for the derivative at a point a. We're looking for f prime of a. So let's write out the definition and see if we can figure out uh, how this would work. So we've already done this before. This is really just some new notation. So f prime of a we saw was equal to, and you can use either form of the definition. I'll do the one that has uh, h going to zero. So the limit as h approaches zero of, and it's f of a plus h minus f of a all over the interval h. And so now I'll just plug into this formula. So this equals, and remember to keep writing the limit out front until you actually take the limit. The limit is h approaches zero of f of a plus h. Okay, so that's going to be a plus h cubed plus two. Okay, and then I have minus f of a. So that's gonna be a cubed plus two. And then all of that is gonna be over h, okay? And so that equals, so I'm gonna do the limit now as h approaches zero of this thing, and let's see, what can I do with this? Well, I can cube this thing out, so let's do that. So if you remember your binomial formula, and you can remember this is supposed to be a cube here, you can remember how this works. Uh, so I'm just gonna write it out. You could also just go ahead and write the whole thing out and cube it. So it's gonna be a cubed plus three a squared h plus three a h squared plus h cubed, and then plus two. And then I have minus a cubed minus two. Remember to distribute that minus sign right here. This is where a lot of mistakes tend to creep in is forgetting to distribute that minus sign. All of this over h. All right, uh, let's see, does anything cancel? An a cubed cancels with an a cubed. I have a plus two and a minus two. And I think that's it for things that cancel. So let's see what we have left here. So I have the limit as h approaches zero of three a squared h plus three 
a h squared plus h cubed all over h. Great. And now I can get rid of the h's here. Uh, so let's see, this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, so I'm not going to have an h in the denominator anymore. I'm going to cancel here, here, and here. So I'm going to have 3a squared. I have 1h surviving here, so it's going to be plus 3ah. And then I have 2h's surviving here, so I'm going to have plus h squared. Okay, now I can take the limit. So if I let h go to 0, these last two terms drop out, and I just have 3a squared. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, remember this was the, uh, one interpretation of this was as the uh, slope of the tangent line at A. So what if I took some specific points? So how about if I look at F prime of negative one, what's that? So that would be three of negative one squared, which is three. So here's negative one, and so that would be right here. So that would be this, if I can draw something that looks like a a tangent line there, so it'd be something like that. Uh, and the slope of that is, that's a positively sloped line. Looks like it could have a slope of about three. That makes sense. How about f prime of zero? What's that? So that would be three times zero squared, which is zero. So here's zero right here. And so if I were to try and draw a tangent line, it would be a flat line right here, which would have a slope of zero. So that makes sense. And finally, I'll look at one more. How about f prime of one? So that would be three times one squared equals three. So here's one on the x-axis. I go up to here. I try and draw something that looks like a tangent line. And again, I see something that looks like a positively sloped line and looks like, yeah, could have a slope of three.